Good morning. It's Tuesday, September 29th, 2020. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, What's a 19th Century Man Doing with a Smartphone? And our scripture is Revelation chapter 1. Look, he comes with the clouds of heaven, and everyone will see him, even those who pierced him. And all the nations of the world will mourn for him. Yes, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord God. I am the one who is, who always was, and who is still to come, the Almighty One. I guess I'm one of those who's always had trouble getting his mind around everyone seeing the coming of Jesus at the same time. After all, if you are in Antarctica's South Pole and I'm in Alaska's North Pole, we cannot physically see what's going on at the same time. Unless, of course, CNN or some other technological wonder is broadcasting it. Nikola Tesla understood that. The passage below that I'm going to read is, uh, was written in 1904, and most striking is Nikola Tesla's precise and largely correct description of a modern smartphone as being a cheap and simple device small enough to carry in one's pocket. Here's the quote. My scheme of intelligence transmission, for which the name of world telegraphy has been suggested, is easily realizable. I have no doubt that it will prove very efficient in enlightening the masses. Each of them will be preferably located near some important center of civilization, and the news it receives through any channel will be flashed to all points of the globe. A cheap and simple device, which may be carried in one's pocket, may then be set up somewhere on sea or land, and it will record the world's news or such special messages as may be intended for it. Thus, the entire earth will be converted into a huge brain, as it were, capable of response in every one of its parts. Since a single plant of but 100 horsepower can operate hundreds of millions of instruments, the system will have a virtually infinite working capacity, and it must needs immensely facilitate and cheapen the transmission of intelligence. End of quote. Have you ever suspected something might be true or false, but you couldn't get your mind around it sufficiently to say a definite yes or no, declaring your belief or disbelief? That's exactly what many people experience about the second coming, the moment that Jesus will return to the earth with all his saints to judge and rule what's already his kingdom, and every living creature will see it in real time. A half century ago, you had to wait for Walter Cronkite on the evening news to verify something like that, but a half century before that, Nikola Tesla was firming it up in his mind that it is a possibility for every creature on planet Earth to know about the same event as it happens. It's no longer speculation that it's possible. The reality is upon us like ugly on the ape. For millennials brought up on the internet, it's no longer even a mild wonder that the moment I post this article, cookies on my website will alert 80 gazillion telemarketers to alert their robocall machines that I need a new car warranty extension and a Superman helmet to ward off Judgment Day. Stuff happens instantly, and the coming of Jesus Christ will be just that. For you today. Something else to keep on the front burner today. Jesus' coming will not just be instantaneous and on everyone's smartphone. It will mark the beginning of his perfect kingdom rule where everyone, believer and unbeliever alike, will acknowledge there is none like him. Philippians chapter 2, Paul wrote this, Therefore God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day in God's light.